last stanza says, look to God in faith. Look to God. Are you looking to God for deliverance tonight? Some of us come in tonight, maybe all of us come in tonight, carrying something with us, part of our life. It's it's, it's something we carry with us, and it's something that we need God to help us with. He will make thee whole. I don't know everyone's need tonight, but we're going we're gonna to basically do a little journey on the great deliverer in the Bible tonight. So, I don't have one text. We have many of them. But we're going to start in 1 Samuel. So, if you have your Bible, let's go to 1 Samuel. I don't, know, I don't normally ask something like this, but I'm going to ask... <clears throat> We're going to pray in just a moment before we begin our journey through the Bible. 1 Samuel 17. I'm going to ask when we pray, you'll pray, number one, that if you see fit, that is, I'm not telling you what to pray, but I'd ask you to pray that whatever it, that, that you would God would deal with you specifically in wherever you need to be challenged tonight. Then I'd like you to secondly pray for me and just pray that God would give me the strength and the words and and just the right attitude and spirit to, to give you this message. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Every time we open up the Bible, we open up you. Someone said one time we opened up the mind of God. Well, I don't know about anybody else in here tonight, but I need to know you in Samarius. What you want me to do, what you don't want me to do. I need to know that you are God. And there is none else. I need to know tonight, God, that from your word, once again, that you're my deliverer. You're my high tower. You're my anchor. Lord, I pray tonight that you'd break our hearts for whatever it is in our life that we need to be delivered from, that we're trying to be delivered from it. That's a dead end trail every time. And I pray that we would find deliverance in you, whatever area it may be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 17 is the great story of David and Goliath. The shepherd boy goes to defeat and ends up defeating the, the big Goliath, the trained warrior. We were, um, where were we? And they had a picture of Goliath. Where was I? Oh, I was at, uh, that's right, that was where we just were in, um, in um, Pasco. They had a picture of this giant, uh, it was a cardboard giant that was up on the platform, and it was the exact, supposed to be the exact size of Goliath, and I think it was a little over nine feet tall, a cutout cardboard of, of Goliath, complete with sword and shield and everything. And, of course, that's what uh, happens here in First Samuel chapter 17, as David goes and and questions his brothers and stands before Saul and Saul says, here's some armor. Why don't you try this armor out? And it's way too big for David. And of course, we know that David goes and chooses five, five smooth stones and, and God provides a great victory. But I want you to focus on one verse in this portion of scripture. First, verse number 46. David is speaking to Goliath. Can you imagine uh, David speaking, uh, David the teenager, speaking to this trained assassin, nine foot tall. I mean, just ready to have David for lunch. David says to Goliath in verse 46, this day, and I've underlined these next four words in my Bible, will the Lord deliver? The Lord will deliver. 
David had so much confidence and so much faith. Because Why did David have this faith? Why did David have this confidence? Because of how the Lord had delivered him in the past. Can I ask you a question? Has the Lord ever delivered you before? Yes, he has. Every one of us in this room, God has delivered us in certain areas of our life, in multiple areas of our life. David said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And, and, and we've got a lot of great verses in here. The next verse, the battle is the Lord's and so forth. But we're focusing on those words that David gave to Goliath tonight, just zeroing in. This day will the Lord deliver what was Goliath to David? Goliath represented the enemy. He was the Philistine representative. He represented uh, all that was wrong. He was the other side, if you will. He, he was the, uh, the, op the opposite of the team. He was on the opposing team. He represented the enemy. He represented wrong. He represented wickedness. He represented all of that. But tonight, focusing on uh, the fact that he was a giant, yes, but he represented the enemy. God gave David a great victory that day. God, David knew, I believe David had the faith to believe that God was going to deliver him uh, primarily because God had already delivered him before. I want you to go with me now to Psalm 18. I love this scripture song. It's a great scripture song here in Psalm 18, verse 3. I will call upon the Lord. How many of you know that scripture song? That's a good scripture song. Maybe the four of us that know it should sing it for you. No, maybe not. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. See what it says there? So shall I be saved. From mine enemies. David said, Goliath, today God's going to deliver you into my hands. David stood there with the boldness of a teenager, but he stood there with the boldness of Almighty God because God had proven himself over and over again in his life. And David said, today, Goliath, you're going to meet your maker. Today, Goliath, I'm going to be holding your head and it won't be on your body anymore. Today, today Goliath, God is going to deliver you. Tonight, God, or the, the, the giant of Goliath represent, represents our enemy. The psalmist said in verse 3, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. I don't know tonight what giant is in your life, but that giant that is in your life is an enemy tonight. There is no way that the giants in your life are, 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 are meant to be there. They will not help you. They will only hinder you. Tonight, maybe some of us need to say with David, tonight, I'm, you're going to be delivered. You're, I'm going to be delivered of this giant. By Almighty God. How can we say this, Pastor Turner? We can say this the same reason that little shepherd boy, I don't know how little he was, but the shepherd boy David could say it because God had delivered the bear from him with his own bare hands. God had delivered the lion from him with his own bare hands. And tonight, I don't know what giant might be in your life, but it's an enemy of, of the spiritual growth that God wants you to grow. He wants you to go on for him. So tonight, maybe some of us need to say right off the bat, number one, we need to be delivered from a giant tonight in our life. You can be saved from your enemies tonight. Notice he says there, I will call upon who? The Lord. When's the last time you called upon the Lord based on a giant in your life? I got this one. I got this giant. No, you, you don't have this giant. I don't have this giant. None of us have the giant. We need to call upon the Lord. Why do we need to call upon the Lord? Because he's worthy for me to call upon. He's never made a mistake. He's never let me down. He's always been there for me. He is our deliverer. What do you need to be delivered from? What enemy, what giant, what something is in your life? Maybe there's more than one. You need to be delivered of it tonight. You can be delivered of it tonight by simply doing what David did. David boldly and faithfully said, I will see you delivered because of the Lord Almighty. Amen. 
He's our great deliverer. He delivers us from our enemies. Go with me to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel 3, verse 17, the context of the story is obviously the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood for right. They stood for the Lord. They say to King Nebuchadnezzar in verse 17, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Our God we serve is able to deliver us. Secondly, this, rep- this is obviously, firstly, we looked at the giant of David, which is a representation of an enemy. Secondly, we see the furnace of the three Hebrew children. And this, I'm representing this as a trial or a time of testing in our life. Tonight, you might be sitting in your seat, and it, spiritually speaking, is as hot as it can get right now. What do you mean by that? You're in the middle of a testing time. A trying time. Why does God test you? Why does God test me? That we might come forth as gold. That we might be better fit for his service. Testing comes into our life not to stay there forever, but to refine us and mold us and make us for his service. And I want to submit to you tonight, my friends, God is able to deliver you. Turn to Psalm 46. Have your Bibles ready tonight. Psalm 46. Verse number one. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help. In trouble. If you're, if you're saved tonight, I want you to know something. God is present right now in your life. Pastor Turner, you don't understand. God is present in your life right now. He's a very present help in trouble. He is your refuge. He is your strength. He will and is able to deliver. Jeremiah chapter 1. David faced a giant, represented his enemy. David said, the Lord will deliver. And the Lord did. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to King Nebuchadnezzar, our God is able to deliver us. They ended up going in the fire. We know the story. Jesus met them in the fire. God delivered them. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces. (laughs) I find that to be a very uh, somewhat funny verse, actually, that first part. If you understand the context here, Jeremiah was preaching and it wasn't being well, too well received. And I don't know if they were sticking their tongue out at him. I don't know if they were making faces at him. I don't know what they were doing. But in some way, you know, the Bible says, you know, don't be afraid of their, their faces, you know. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Tonight, I'd, I'd like to liken this. The first one we talked about was the giant, the enemy. Then, we sec- then the second we talked about was the furnace or the trial. Thirdly, I'd like to see that tonight God delivers us from loneliness. Jeremiah was pretty lonely. He was standing for right. He was doing what was right and yet wasn't being too received by the, the crowd. And 
It's very evident by that, and it's very evident by reading the book of Jeremiah, the, the weeping prophet and all that Jeremiah went through for the Lord, but God was able to deliver him. Many of you here tonight go to workplace tomorrow morning. You might be pretty lonely in your workplace. You say, what do you mean I'm lonely? I mean there's not too many other Christians at your workplace. The only time Jesus Christ is mentioned at your workplace is in, in a form of profanity. Or when, you, or when you stand up and say something about the Lord. I want to encourage you tonight with this. Be not afraid of their faces. I want to encourage you tonight that those of you that, and I'm, and I'm there every Monday. I want to encourage you tonight, those of you that, you, you teenagers that go to the public school. I'm so glad the Lord has given us the opportunity to go, to go uh, into Burnaby Mountain to proclaim uh, the message of the Lord. But I'll tell you, um, now that I've been in there for all these years, it definitely helps me to pray for the, for the Christian uh, teenagers that are in the public school better. But I want to challenge you young people with this verse tonight, be not afraid of their faces. Just walking in and out of there on Mondays a few times over the few years, there's been a little bit uh, uh, of derision from some kids. In fact, I had one kid one time, just as I was walking out, uh, he, made, he, he used some profanity right in my face in reference to, to the Lord because he knew I was from the Christian club. I mean, it was just in passing. It's only happened a few times. I want to encourage you young people, I want you to know that we as a church, we need to be praying for these teenagers that are in these public schools because God has you there for you to be a witness. Hey, be a Jeremiah. Amen. Be willing to stand up. Be willing to, to, to stand up for the Lord. Don't be afraid of, of those that would tease and mock and ridicule you. You stand for what is right. How do you do this? The same way Jeremiah did it, for the Lord is able to deliver you. Loneliness. Sometimes it's a lonely battle standing for the Lord. Jeremiah is someone who can tell us about it. But God delivered Jeremiah. God delivered you and God can deliver me. Do you need deliverance tonight in that area? Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse 10. Let's read verse nine as well. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. The fourth area that God wants to deliver us from tonight, and many of you have been delivered from this already, and I'm thanking the Lord for it, but there might be someone here who has yet to be delivered from this, but God wants to deliver us from eternal death and hell. Jesus Christ does not want anyone to perish. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 7, I'll just quote it for you. Well, you want to turn there, you may, but it says, and delivered just Lot. Of course, obviously he was delivered from Sodom and Gomorrah, but here it says that Lot was just. It says that Lot was actually a believer. He was delivered by who? He was delivered by God. He was delivered from destruction. Tonight, if you do not know, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the only way you can be delivered from eternal death is through Jesus Christ. I would, I would again implore you tonight to consider what the book of Romans says in chapter number 5 and verse number 8. But God commendeth his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You can be delivered tonight from eternal separation uh, from God. You can be delivered from the lake of fire simply by coming to Christ in, in, in repentance and in humility and accepting him as your savior. You can be delivered. There is only, he is the only way. 
That's the message of the hour. It is the message that we must continue to preach. It's the reason why we have all that we do here. Everything that we have here focuses to the gospel. I wonder tonight, can you remember when you got saved? When God delivered you from the hand of the devil? When God made you, took you from being a child of the devil and made you a child of God. Wasn't that a wonderful day? When you were delivered from the grasp of the enemy, when you were delivered from the pit of hell, no longer to have to suffer forever in the lake of fire upon eternal, upon our death or upon the Lord returning as we talked about today. I'm so glad that I have a testimony that I've been delivered from my sin. What about you? Do you have a testimony? Have you been delivered from eternal death? God wants to be your deliverer tonight. Turn to Psalm 34. God, our great deliverer. I may not touch on something that is specific to your life, but I'm sorry you cannot help tonight, but at least take this theme with you as we, as we get to a point in our message. We're moving through it right now, but you cannot help but take this theme with you tonight as you go through the week and realize things are going to come into your life this week. I pray that this week we would begin to focus on the things that come into our life in not a way that how can I get out of this, but how will God deliver me from this? Not how can we figure this out, but how will God be the one who delivers me? Because God will always deliver. Psalm 34, verse 19. I want you to notice a key word. It's the first word in the verse. Would you say it out loud with me? Ready? One, two, three. Many. Is that what it says? Many. It doesn't say few. Few doesn't say a couple. It says many. I've circled the word many in my Bible. Many are the, what's the next word? Afflictions. I've circled that word in my Bible. So the Bible says here we have many afflictions. If anybody, if any of you join the Christian ranks to have few or very little aff afflictions, you join the wrong ranks. Because it says many are the afflictions of who? The wicked, right? No, it says the righteous. It says many are the afflictions of those who do right. Many are the afflictions of the children of God. Many, not few, not some, but many. But the verse doesn't stop. Hallelujah. But the Lord. I've circled that word in my Bible. The Lord. Notice what's, what's the next word after Lord? Delivereth. He's the great deliverer. The Lord delivereth him out of most of them. Unless you've got a different translation, that's not what it says right there. The Lord delivereth him out of them all. Amen. What affliction are you in the middle of tonight? Let me just say it. God will deliver you from that affliction. Trust him. Have faith in him. Lean on him. Know that he loves you. It says here, I take the Bible to be literally what it says. He says he'll deliver him out of them all. By the way, that's for the righteous. Tonight you may not be righteous in the sense of you may not be a Christian. You say, I'd like to claim that. Well, first you've got to be delivered from eternal death before you can claim being delivered from all your afflictions. This is for the, this is for the saved. This is for the believer. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Lord willing, we're going to have Brother Kirby Campbell with us in May. He is someone who I look at as someone who has seen many afflictions. Physically speaking. Going in for a procedure and having a and, and a um, epidural done and the epidural being done inappropriately and because of that wrong uh, the needle being put in wrong it's given him a disease that he'll never be cured of more than likely arachnoiditis I just saw him just a few weeks ago down in San Diego and as I was saying even here I think that he was sitting on the end of the pew in the service and he was constantly rocking back and forth because of pain but when I saw him that night and we met to, they had some fellowship and some food and things and he came over and we talked. He didn't talk one time about the pain he was in. I'll tell you what he talked about. He talked about the goodness of the Lord. 
He talked about how God was blessing. He talked about how God was using, the, using them to, to be a help. He talked about, uh, he asked about how our church was doing. I mean, it was more about what, what was going on here than what was going on in his life. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. By the way, when the Lord delivers us out of our afflictions, it doesn't mean necessarily that he's going to take away all the pain. But he goes with us as he did the three Hebrew children through the fire. What do you need to be delivered from tonight? Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Flip over to chapter 6, please. Verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me. The world is dead unto me and I unto the world. What I take from these two verses of scripture is that God wants to deliver us from the world. God wants to deliver us from worldly thinking worldly influence tonight it's 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 sad that so many and i i don't i don't i, I i'm trying to just be thinking not just in, in this room i don't want you to ever think that but when i when i when i see so many examples of christians that have not been delivered they they have not they have not allowed the lord to, to deliver them from the world they still have so much egypt on them the Bible says in Exodus chapter 18, in fact, hold your place there in Galatians. And let's, would you go back there quickly with me? I think you can turn fast or punch it in your phone fast for those of you that use phone Bibles. Uh, Exodus, I wasn't trying to be mean there, but no. Exodus chapter 18, you probably beat all of us there with those gadgets. Exodus chapter 18, uh, verse number 8. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh <coughs> and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake and all the travail that had come upon them by the way and how the Lord delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel whom he had delivered. Verse 9. Out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord. He's talking to Moses and he's saying, Blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. I would say a good portion of us here tonight know that Egypt is a picture of the world. And God delivered Israel from the world. God brought them out of the world to make them and give them the law and take them into the land of Canaan. But before that, he delivered them from the world. I'm so thankful tonight that we have a God who has delivered us and wants to deliver us from this worldly influence that is around us. But here's the problem. We as God's people, if we're not careful, we play with the world. And when you play with the world, you become like the world. You play with the world's music, and I play with the world's music, and we play with this, and we play with that, and we play with this, and we play with that, and we're just basically uh, uh, more worldly than we are Christian, if you will. You know what God wants from you and God wants from me? He wants a group of separated Christians that love Him. And I'm telling you, tonight, some of us need to say, God, deliver me from this. And you know what it is, too. And I know what it is, too, in my life. 
We all know what it is in our lives. Don't point at the person next to you or behind you. Tonight, some of us need to say, God, deliver me from this worldly fill in the blank. The only person that can deliver us from that is God. You can have a 12 step. It's not 12 steps. It's one. God. God wants to deliver us from this present evil world and the influence. Because you see, if we're still, if we're still afflicted by the world, how can we serve God as, how can we be a servant as God wants us to be? I want to give you one more that goes right along with what we just talked about. Turn to Joshua 2. There's a reason why God wants to deliver us from the world. Because he has something far better for us than Egypt. He has something far better for us than the, the garlic of Egypt. Look at Joshua chapter 2. Verse 24. Let me just tell you what's happened and we'll quickly look at this. The spies have gone the second time. They've been to Rahab's house. They've told her about leaving the scarlet cord out. They've come back now to Joshua to give him a report. Verse 23, so the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all the things that had befell them, all the things that they had experienced. And they said unto Joshua, truly, the Lord hath delivered into our hands, notice this, all the land. God has delivered into our hands all the land. I liken this to provisions. God has delivered us from Egypt. And provided us all the land. What was that land? That land was Canaan. They hadn't gone and they hadn't conquered it yet, but God had provided it for them. Can what does Canaan represent? Canaan represents, I know we sing the song, Canaan land is just inside. But Canaan doesn't represent heaven. Canaan, rep Canaan represents spiritual rest and spiritual victory. God wants to deliver us from Egypt. And provide us with spiritual rest. You tell me, is it very relaxing to be a Christian and live like the world? It's not. The most miserable person alive is someone who's a believer, who's a Christian, who's away from the Lord. Not doing what they're supposed to do. They haven't experienced Canaan. Because they're back in Egypt. They haven't experienced that rest. God gives them all the victory and God gives them all the, the cities and God gives them everything and the, the, the finances and the, and the clothing and the, everything is already there. It's already set up for them. There's rest when we leave Egypt and God says, I want to be the great deliverer. I want to deliver you spiritual rest. He says, why are you wandering like the children of Israel? Why do, you want, why do we want to wander? When we can find rest in him. God brings us through the wilderness into the abundant life. God has something he wants to deliver you from. I gave you a bunch of those. And now this lastly as we close. He wants to deliver us to a life of rest. A life of victory. Don't raise your hand. But how many of us would say. Boy there's some areas in my life that are anything but victorious. I think we would all raise our hand. But what's the secret? The secret is exactly what, Je what these men said. God had delivered into us. It's time for us to walk away from Egypt, and it's time for us to walk into Canaan. There's rest there. There's victory there. So God's the deliverer. You and I, if we would set our eyes on him, he is able to deliver you. But... If we just continue to go along our, our, our path that we're, that we're on and we say, yeah, okay, God's able to deliver me, good. It's not going to change anything. 
until we get on our face before Almighty God and say, God, you know the areas in my life. You know this. You know the giant in my life, the giants in my life. You know the loneliness. You know the struggles I face trying to stand for you. You know the afflictions that are come upon me and they seem like they're caving in on me. You know that the world is grabbing at me and that worldly... God, I'm sincerely tonight saying, please deliver me. Help me to go through these, whatever they are. But what does God have? God has Canaan for you. There's so much rest. If you go to the book of Hebrews, I believe it's Hebrews 6, 7, or 8, somewhere in there. And there's a couple of chapters that talk about the rest of God. Tonight, God wants us to rest in him. Rest in his goodness. He's the great deliverer. What do you need to be delivered from? Maybe I didn't even talk about it. But God knocked on your heart and said, you need, maybe it's, maybe it's you need to be delivered from eternal death. You've never been saved. How about tonight? I don't know what it might be in your life, but I know this. As I looked through and just looked at these words about deliverance. And you know what you can go do and do your own Bible study this week and even look more into how God delivers all the time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the truths in your word.